on one photo raw is an incredible tool regardless of if you are a beginner or intermediate in editing photos there are some features that will help you get your creative thoughts out and into the world a little bit faster now this video does assume you know how to get your photos into on one photo raw if you don't know how to do that don't worry check the description box. There'll be a link to a video teaching you exactly how to get your files into on one photo raw. Now, if you want to support this channel, consider using my coupon code freewillphotos 20 when purchasing anything over at the on one website, you'll save a little bit of money and I get a small commission at no extra cost to you. It's a win win for both of us and it helps this channel continue to be funded and supported. And I greatly appreciate everyone who supports this channel in that way. Now let's dive into the content. So here we are inside of on one photo raw and we have this photo in front of us and it doesn't really matter what genre of photography that you are into because the steps that I'm going to go over are going to be very simple. And the very first step is basic levels of the image. Now I mentioned that on one is very, very user friendly to beginners. So all you have to do is click on develop if you don't already have that uh, tab open and then click on brilliance AI. There should be a little circle next to it. When you click this on one's going to do all of the heavy lifting of developing the light in your image. Assuming that you captured your photo with good uh, exposure values, then your photo is going to be developed quite well. And you can literally just leave it like this. So if I hit the backslash key, you can see what the image looked like. Mind you, this is a raw image. And then this is what on one was able to develop. Now, if you want to go one step further, you can click on Brilliance AI and that will expand the window if it's not already expanded for you. And then you have an amount slider and I can pull this left or right and you can see what it's doing to the image on screen and you really just pull this until you find something that you really really enjoy and it's that simple now if you want to know what's happening behind the scenes with brilliance ai leave a comment down below saying chris tell me what's happening with brilliance ai and i will make that video for you now one more thing that you need to know about brilliance ai before we move to the next step is that it will create something known as a local adjustment. And this is the secret sauce that all professionals use. And it's the next step in editing a photo. Local adjustments are created by Brilliance AI automatically, and it will select your image. If you want to advance to the local tab, you can do it in two ways. The first way is by clicking this little icon, this little arrow, and that will advance you to the local tab or you can come up here to your actual tabs and click on local. Local adjustments are, they, they can seem intimidating, especially when you open this up and you see all of these sliders and you know, you're like, whoa, what slider do I need to grab? Don't worry, I'm gonna help you with this and show you exactly how to do it. But first we need to know how to create a mask. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and turn off this adjustment by clicking this little blue icon and I'm going to collapse my local adjustment. So I'm not looking at that. I'm going to go ahead and hit the letter K on my keyboard, or you can just come over here to the left bumper and click on this little wand looking thing. This is going to give you the super select AI tool. And this is one of those AI features that is extremely helpful to making your photos look great. And it also unlocks the capability of masking. And this is where professionals really do set themselves apart from doing those global edits or edits to the entire image. In order to use this tool, it's really easy. What you'll do is hover over the image and it'll select different parts of the image. The way that I like to use this tool and I recommend you use it is if you want to select something that you click and drag to select that entire item or that entire uh, subject in the photo. So what I'm going to do is just click and drag a box over these leaves so that way I can select them. Once I let it go, you can see that it has selected all of the leaves because they're now highlighted in blue. That means that I've created a mask over the leaves. The next step when you're using Super Select AI is you need to apply some sort of adjustment to it. 
The way that I like to do it is I like to right click and then click adjustment. Now, if you don't have the right click options enabled on your version of on one, don't worry about it. You can come up here to the top uh, toolbar and then click on adjustment. That's going to do the exact same thing. So now I have applied a negative exposure effect or a darkening effect to just the leaves in the image. Now, I don't really want to do that. I actually want to make them brighter. So what I'm going to do is just pull this exposure slider over to the right until I get a little bit brighter. Now, your photo may require something different, but I'm going to show you a very common technique in photo editing that professionals use to really build a little bit more dynamic uh, or dimension in their photos. And on one does a phenomenal job at allowing us to do this, and that's by selecting the leaves here, I have now made those brighter. So what I want to do is select my background and make those darker. So what I'm gonna do is click add adjustment, minimize that, and then I'm going to go back to the uh, adjustment where my leaves are. I'm gonna right click and hit copy. This has now copied that mask to my clipboard. So when I come back to my adjustment where that I just created, I can right click on that mask and I can hit paste. This is now uh, a duplicate of the mask on my back or on this adjustment. Now all I have to do is right click it again, the mask icon and hit invert mask. Now feel free to slow this down, go back and replay it if I went a little fast. But essentially, all I did was I took the mask from this adjustment and put it onto a new adjustment, and I did the reverse. Instead of making the leaves my selected item, I selected the background because if I already had the leaves selected, I just flipped it upside down, and that works out. So now all I have to do is adjust the darkness and I now have my adjustment. So this is the before when we started off and this is the after where we are with just the two steps of basic exposure and the local adjustments. Now you could stop here if you are satisfied with your overall image. Sometimes you wanna jump into something known as stylizing your image or styling your image. And this is where I think a lot of beginners get really, really confused and intimidated. But let me show you how On One makes this really, really simple for you to do. All you're gonna do is come over to your presets here in On One. And if you don't see it, it's probably because the uh, left bumper is hidden. So we'll just go ahead and come down to show hide left pane. I'm sorry, not bumper. And then we're gonna click on the top option here where it says AI style advisor. Now this is, if you're using on one photo raw 2025, you'll see this. If you are using an older version than 2024, you will not see this. But if you're using the newer version of on one, then you'll definitely have this option. So let's go ahead and click that. You get two more options here, and I recommend going to the on one team option. So let's go ahead and click that. And this is gonna give you a few styles that you could apply to your image and really make something that looks really unique and cool and just the way that you want your photos to be. Now, on one is going to load those in. And if I just hover my mouse over, I'm not clicking, I'll get a preview of what this looks like on the overall image uh, once it loads in. So we'll go to this orange one and you can see what's happening there. Uh, we'll go to this more faded look and you can see what's happening there. Now, for me, I personally like this look. And what's cool about On One, and this is very unique to On One, I'm sure there's other editors out there that may do something similar to this, but what's cool about On One is that when I click this, it's going to only apply the effects to my effects tab. We haven't gone to that tab yet, but don't worry, I'm gonna explain it here in a second. I get a dialogue pop up because I haven't checked this box here. And this box is really just saying, 
all of the effects that you have are about to be replaced. Now, I'm going to hit no just to show you. I don't have any effects in my effects module. But let me come back over here to local and show you why this is so powerful. I just spent all this time creating the right light dynamic in my image. Effects is where I'm going to add a creative look to my image. I don't really want to modify the light anymore, uh, or I only want to modify the light in a creative way. So I'm going to go ahead and click this option here. We'll just hover off and then come back, click it so that way it applies. I get my dialog box here. I'm going to go ahead and check this because I don't need to see this anymore. I'm going to hit yes. I want you to continue applying these effects. And on one has now applied those effects over here to my effect stack. Now, you don't need to do anything with this. If you say, you know, that looks a little too harsh. I don't like the way that it looks on my overall image. You don't have to know what all of this is doing. OK, that comes a little bit later. This is just for getting a creative look on the image. When you're on the effects tab, you'll have something called opacity. If you just pull this to the left, it's going to start to bring back your original image. And it's going to add in all of these effects just a little bit to give your image a little bit of a look and make it look really cool and creative. So if I hold down the backslash key, you can see what we started with and you can see what we've finished with. So the next step is to hit the blue check mark and then you can export your images. Now, if you don't know how to do that, go ahead and click the video on the screen now. So that way you can learn exactly how to export your images. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.